Sir, good evening, Dr. Rahul Kapoor. Yes, yes, good evening. Good evening, everybody. Yeah. I am Dr. Sembu Prasad, principal of the college. Uh, with your kind permission, my, our team will uh, continue with the proceedings, sir. Thank you so much, sir. <coughs> Thank you for inviting me, really. So, Dr. Subodh Panda. Sir. Subodh Panda, sir, has joined? Yes, sir, yes, sir, joined. Is not replaced? Sir. Subodh Panda, sir. Subodh Panda, sir. Subodh Panda, sir, you are not audible, sir. Please check your mind. Subodh Panda, sir, you are not audible, sir. Sir, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Now yes. you are audible, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, one, you can start, ma. Okay, sir. A very good evening and warm welcome to our Honorable Vice Prince, Vice President, sir, Mr. Satish Mehta, sir, our Honorable. Principal Sir, Dr. Yes Ambu Prasad Sir, Vice Principal Sir, our Resource Person, Dr. Rahul Kapoor Sir, HODs of Respectable Departments, Management Staff, Faculty Members, Technical Staff, and all the participants to the webinar on the topic Identifying Intellectual Property at the Early Stage of Innovation. Myself, Shravan, from Second Year Mechanical Engineering of Pragati Engineering College. Now, I would like to invite Julipala Vaishnavi of ECE to start the webinar by an invocation song. Vaishnavi, please. Shri Maha Ganapate Shri Maha Ganapate Purapate Siddhi Vinayaka Namotute Shri Maha Ganapate Purapate Siddhi Vinayaka Namotute Shri Maha Ganapate Karana Karana Shri Pajana Kushala Vikasana Shishwar Vandita Charana Karana Karana Shri Pajana Kushala Vikasana Shishwar Vandita Charana 
कृपया पाहि शुभ स्वरन वदन जनासिगरन भव सरन विघ्न निवारन वर गुण श्री महारन पसे पुरा पसे पृथ्वी नारक सूते thank you vaishnavi now i would like to invite our coordinator dr subodh panda sir to welcome the gathering sir please okay thank you sir good evening one and all present over this webinar platform on behalf of institution innovation council pragati engineering college i the coordinator professor subodh panda takes the opportunity to start the program with heartly welcome to you all we are deeply honored to welcome our beloved vice president sir sir you are mostly welcome to grace the occasion we heartily welcome to our convener of this program president iic respected principal sir sir you are highly welcome we offer our grateful welcome to research person of today's program dr rahul ji please you are welcome our desire to extend a gracious welcome to all the dignitaries professors hods key functionaries of pragati engineering college my team iic faculty participators respected sir and madam you are please welcome it's a happy moment to extend my cheerful welcome to all the student particip participators my dear little friends you are highly welcome i acknowledge readiness of every one of you and willingness to lead this program towards successful end once again welcome and thank you all over to seven thank you seven, sir please thank you sir welcome now i would like to introduce our resource person dr rahul kapoor sir founder and director of tanip innovations has a over a decade of experience in patent information science searching and consulting multinational firms like general electric and robot bosch he obtained his phd in innovation management from lut university finland and has a over 15 research articles published in reputed international journals he is a data architect of ipgram a global patent analytics platform covering over 100 million patents from over 100 countries so please thank you thank you very much shravan thank you very much dr shubodh sir uh, thank you very much vashnami for the most beautiful song thank you to all the dignitaries and it is really great to see uh, 164 plus certain number so 175 maybe people joining this session uh, it's an honor thank you very much i welcome you all and uh, i hope all of you are at home uh, you are comfortable and uh, uh, so this webinar is uh, as practical as possible so i've tried to make it as practical as possible and in this webinar a lot of times uh, you will actually have to also do something hands on so even like almost 15 or even half an hour you uh, you will probably i will ask you to do some patent search and and so on so for that you might need to open a different browser tab where you can you know open a website, open a website. Uh, and and you know conduct the searches so i will also of course show you alongside so no need to worry no need no pressure uh uh but yeah just uh, saying that you know uh, be active and possibly you should sit uh, sit upright you know uh, a lot of times webinars we are doing you know uh, lying on our sofa or bed or you know but uh, uh i hope that you will be active and 
it is uh, an honor for me to speak to so many students uh, who are going to go out there uh, with the skills that you have acquired and uh, possibly uh, create uh, new new creations new inventions and uh, possibly get patents uh, from 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 those innovations uh, so if uh, uh, sometimes i might ask you to write on the chat so i would be grateful if sometimes when i ask the question you can write on the chat so i know that okay people are following me and there is enthusiasm so yeah without further ado let's you know begin uh, uh, so so le so let's see if the chat works it works otherwise yeah we, we still move on so the topic today is basically early phase of innovation where the creativity and idea is mostly in the head of of the of the of the scholar so uh, i want to primarily talk about practical ways in which you can mature your innovations and push it towards an actual product and an actual uh, patent uh, so just quick first question i want you to write on the chat what is the difference between an idea and an invention so if possible you know i would be grateful to have some answers from from your side uh, and also please write on the chat if possible uh, whether you can hear me well and whether you can see me well whether you can see my slides properly then i would also get a cue that everything is fine and uh, so is it so that the users cannot write on the chat can i can i get some feedback because i see the chat yes, and users can write sir okay okay so can anyone write uh, that they can see me well they can hear me well and they can see my screen ah uh, yeah okay someone has said idea cannot take implementation form sometimes yes good thank you very much so this is a uh, confirmation that people can see my slides hear me and also they are active and enthusiastic to answer on the on the chat idea is just a thought perfect innovation innovation is more concrete yes new idea uh what you think the invention is application of the idea A absolutely so you are getting more real getting more real with the with your idea that's when you know it becomes an invention so excellent thank you very much for the answers and uh, uh, and of course as you'd expect all these answers are correct they are uh, that is the real that is the reality so uh, i have uh, my own definition so we have our own definition of an idea so in terms of patenting that uh, is what you know we are saying is an idea becomes an invention when it can be described in sufficient detail okay so sufficient detail can be actually a lot of detail it can be extensive details but the fact remains that your idea should not be just you know something in your head it should be you know described in as much detail as possible that's when an idea is you know being pushed towards becoming an invention so can an idea be patented copyrighted uh, the answer is no okay so there is no protection out there for ideas and there are some people some some shady businesses who will tell you that okay you just have some idea and they will you know draft some uh, some kind of a poor application and do the form formalities but uh, in real world there is no use of that and it doesn't work no respectable patent agent patent attorney is ever going to draft a patent which is just you know in the head of the in inventor so they are uh, even we when we take uh, patent filing jobs we give an invention disclosure form disclosure and form. we make and sure uh, we make sure that uh, it is uh, filled in a very proper way so that we know that this is a serious invention that we want to pay so okay so one of the ways you can start to start extracting features from your idea is actually writing it is one of the most underrated skill uh, in innovation and writing is when actually we do writing all the time you have to write your thesis you have to write your phd thesis you have to write research papers so all the time no matter in the field of science where you are you are always uh, supposed to write about uh, the things that you are doing and this is no different in terms of pat of of pat patenting when you write your idea that's when the idea takes shape 
that's when you are able to extract features from your idea and also it gives you you yourself more clarity about your own invention so uh, and actually it helps you to think and it helps you to improve your invention so like i uh, said writing is one of the most important uh, part for an inventor and you should always take time to write so in this lecture also i will speak about what you can write what references you can use to write and so on uh, of course there is an invention disclosure form that can be used for for writing so i if possible i will show you uh uh an invention disclosure form example so that you really appreciate you know what's going on uh with uh, yeah, like what is expected from an invention you know that is the idea uh so this is just from a wipo website i just searched an invention disclosure form format uh by the way please let me know if you can see my screen so so that i i know that when i am going switching between different screens uh, you are able to see that would be great if you can write on the chat yes okay okay fine uh, so yeah you can see this is one of the uh, what are the parts of an invention disclosure so you can see here okay it starts from the basic you have to write the title of your invention usually it was within 15 words uh, then you have to name all the inventors in a very precise way who are the inventors of the in, of this so patents or any kind of ip they are you know property rights and it is often it happens that they end up in disputes when the stakes are high when the invention becomes a real product a blockbuster product you know there are often times when there is court litigation and so on and these are all things that you know if you do it properly in the beginning uh, you can avoid a lot of disputes uh, later so it should be very clear who the inventors are and this is the and even when you are filing a patent uh, application you are you will have to write very very clearly who are the exact uh, you know three four five inventors that are involved in the innovation uh, here again there are some questions you can uh, refer to actually turnip uh, we also have a very simple invention disclosure form with just two questions but i am showing you more so that you really appreciate what it takes for you to you know get a patent what problem does this invention solve so here again you're saying don't describe the invention but focus on the problem because unless your invention is solving a real world problem you will not get a patent granted so it's one of the criteria for you will see in a bit uh, when my slide when i go further in my slides that industrial applicability is one of the grounds on which your patent can be rejected that if it doesn't have any invention uh, any uh, commercial app, app application uh you can write you know what stage of development you are you, then you can write the summary of the invention these are all you know some cues that you can follow the date of the invention again this is important you have to also sometimes prove to the examiner that you have uh, invented it on a certain date by you know showing some laboratory notes or you know some kind of uh, you know proof so here uh, it is always good because even later there might be disputes as to who was the first inventor and then in that this case if everything is properly documented you can avoid lot of issues later uh, so uh, the advantage you have against your peers and so on so i, I will not go through one by one it's a very very long doc uh, document but i just wanted to give you an idea about uh, you know what it takes to you know finally go on a path to getting a patent so uh, you, you inevitably you will have to uh, fill an invention disclosure form before uh, you know you will be able to file a patent so this is the patent filing trend of the top 5 patent offices in the world you can see china it's really going off the roof and in 2012 it overtook the united states as the largest patent office in the world so you can see almost uh, more than 1 and 1/2 million patents are filed in china every year and for pretty much all countries you will see that there is a good growth of patents but you can see japan uh, it's the only one in the green it's going a bit down and actually you will see that this is also reflecting on the economic growth on the gdp of the nation so Jap japanese economy has shrunk since the year 2000 and this is also showing in the lack of innovation or or the downward trend of patent applications so uh, what i want to say is that patents on a macro level 
are very closely related to the economic growth of a company uh, of, of a country so if your number of patents are high in the country the economic growth will be high so uh, this is uh, applies directly to india also so if we want to solve global challenges that we face today uh, owing to covid 19 and owing, owing to climate change uh, uh, population pressure so all these you know uh, economic and social problems that india has can be solved by innovation and that is why patenting is one of the key metric on which you know our future uh, gdp our future uh, per capita lifestyle and all this will be determined uh some uh, statistics from india uh, since india was very very small that is why i could not put them in this top 5 offices chart but you now you will get some appreciation of how low the filing of indian patent office is so we are filing around 50000 patents per year and that is here it says 30 times less than chinese patent office so they are 1.5 million so uh, but the real thing is also that who are the top filers in india actually this is from our own patent uh, ap application ipgram and uh, you will see here that all these top 10 companies who are the top 10 filers in india they are all foreign companies so basically even in the top 10 there is no indian patent applicant in india so the first indian applicant comes at number 14 which is csir council of scientific industrial research which is a government research body having many many different uh, uh, units of research in all over the country so they are number 14 so out of this 50000 actually almost 33000 so two thirds are filed by foreign entities and one third uh, 16 17000 are filed by indian in entities so now you get the true you know uh you know the gravity of the situation that how low patent filings are in in india and that is why to offset these numbers to really increase these numbers very fast we need an entire generation basically of engineer scientists to you know create work and patent them so like all the master's thesis phd thesis and even the bachelor's thesis to a to a large extent should you know come into the framework where there is a potential of filing patents uh, with those work and that is the goal of this lecture to show you some practical points how how you can achieve it uh so okay so invention disclosure form i already discussed it but i will show it to you once more time uh, so typical criteria if you want to take screenshots of these you know slides feel free to take it so what problem does the invention solve what are the commercial applications of the technology describing the invention in detail how it works uh, how is the technology better or different from the existing solutions so this is also very important part where you have to show that whatever exists in the present uh you know have some limitations which you have sort and of course a brief prior art search is needed so here is the trick where uh prior art search is one of the topics for this lecture and uh, i am here to show you that everyone can perform a simple prior art search you don't need to be a very very experienced patent professional to perform an early stage prior art search to perform an idea val validation search so i'll just show i'll just show, show you how and this prior art search is needed for many reasons one is that if you don't learn what is already there how are you going to you know get your own patent so it's just like going to play a cricket match with without ever practicing you know you have to understand that if you have never seen cricket if you have never followed what your uh, people in the past have done how are you going to you know improve how are you going to play at a at a very high level so so there it is with patents also you have to see what your contemporaries have done you have to learn from them and you have to so get ideas from them to you know become more creative and start to differentiate your own work uh, with the prior art so prior art search is also essential to differentiate your application because how will you show that you are different if there is no prior art okay so if you are saying that there is no prior art then uh, the thing is that there is no such thing in the world which is completely unique there is like no one has ever done because it's just not the nature of in innovation innovation is always built upon shoulders of giants a lot of people uh, we get uh, 
uh, who come to us and they say that they have a patent uh, they have an invention they would like to patent it and uh, they say that there is no prior and we don't take those people se- seriously we don't work with them because actually it is also natural that inventors have a high opinion of themselves when they do a professional prior art that's when they realize that uh, things are not uh, uh, things are not how they thought uh, so okay moving on Uh, so invention disclosure form when you fill it uh, the thing is it is not a formality so if your institute has an invention disclosure form or you are getting it from somewhere it is not just that okay you fill the title abstract and you submit it so it's not it beats the whole you know point of an invention disclosure so it can take even 2 months for you 3 months for you to fill, fill an invention disclosure form properly because innovation is happening while you are filling the invention disclosure form so a lot of people think that they will first do the innovation and then they will fill the invention disclosure form but that is also not usually the case usually what happens is that while you write while you are forced to think by the difficult questions in an invention disclosure form that's when your invention matures and that's when you get new creative ideas uh how to write some guidelines okay so first you can do is define uh, again feel free to take a screenshot of this of this slide so define the problem broadly followed by general broad statements about your invention so first you have to define it broadly and uh, so and then you have to mention how are the various components structured so uh, here if needed you have to make a drawing so drawing actually there is another slide which will say that it's one of the most essential part of an invention and um, inventions that have better drawings are more likely to succeed at the patent office uh so how are the various components structured how are they connected to each other how they function together so describe each element okay so if you have like a complex product which has many many different uh, items that are assembled uh, make sure that you describe each an element and also you show how they interact and connect with each, each other if needed you describe the external environment in which the invention operates for example your invention needs a 12 volt external battery supply your invention needs a certain temperature to work your chemical compound or something needs uh, the humidity to be within a certain range to for for it to work so anything that is external which is required for your invention to work properly uh, you should mention uh, properly that what are the external things uh, describe the overall function uh put differentiating points with prior art like i said earlier with when you have prior art you need to dif- it helps you it enables you to differentiate your own invention you can say that okay some prior art uh by the way if some people don't know what prior art is it's simply previous knowledge so any previous patent or any previous research paper or any previous public knowledge related to your invention so so again you can always say that okay this is the previous uh literature this is the previous spit and previous publication and this does things in a in this way and we are doing it in a different way and and that difference is significant and this is when you know you are on your path to uh, forming uh to getting a patent granted so remember when you do write nobody but the inventor is in the best position to write so don't hope that somebody will come and write for you don't hope that you will hire a patent agent or you will hire a patent attorney and they are going to uh, you know write it for you so they are file a good patent agent is filing 10 applications a month he is working with different clients and he does not know all the inventions at the back of his head he is a professional in patents and he can guide you in the best possible way but they are not the best people to write your invention completely so remember you know the most about your invention and hence the onus is on you to write your invention as extensively as possible a little bit about importance of drawings so patent drawings they aid in understanding the invention clearly and again this is one more important part of the patent system where it can be a ground of refusal if your patent what however you have described your patent however you have described your invention uh if someone says that it's not understandable it is not clearly written you know it can be a grounds of refusal because the basic tenet of the patent system is that patents are public and any person who is skilled in that particular domain should be able to understand uh, your invention and that is where drawings come in 
and i can tell you you will always have to communicate your invention to others whether it is the patent agent you will work with whether it is the examiner in the patent office who you have to convince that your patent is is you know unique and even say in future if your patent gets into a dispute uh, you will have to have a court a jury a judge to whom you have to explain your invention and it will help you know one day you will see that just because you were clearly able to express your invention uh, you got some benefit from the from that so it goes without saying that good drawings will create stronger patents and the drawings should be done by the inventors in the beginning so the first version of drawings definitely you should do it on your own simply because uh, getting good uh, hiring good people to draw might be expensive and also there are no there is no limitation of tools out there in the market there are many drawing tools you can even use powerpoint to draw flow charts you can there's online tools tools like draw.io Uh, to just you know put sequence of events and and make the rudimentary diagrams and as such even hand drawings are are fine so again so this was the importance of drawings uh, and then make sure your invention is pat- patentable so i have briefly you know summarize some of the things that are not patentable you can go to the full list from here section 3 of the patent act in india uh, it is not truly the a uh, discussion for today but if your invention falls within these basic criteria like it's frivolous and contrary to established natural laws it will get rejected if it's contrary to public order or morality so in every country they have this law so for example in india you cannot patent something where uh, it goes against morality or against you know some some kind of a uh, some kind of a poses a security risk to the country or so on you cannot uh, patent a method of agriculture or horticulture you cannot patent literary dramatic musical artistic work these are all in the domain of copyrights you cannot patent a plant or animal in whole or part thereof and finally you cannot patent mathematical or business methods or computer programs per se so basically a mathematical equation is considered like a law of nature so if you are pat- if you have only an algorithm uh, even if it's unique it is not patentable uh if you have a business method which is a pure business method it is not patentable if you have a computer program which is only a set of code which even if it's a unique it is not patentable so uh so all of these uh, things they are not patentable unless there is a technical effect a real life technical problem they are solving uh, they will not be patentable for example a computer program that is used to create a product that solves a technical problem that you know might be a place where you might get a patent for for the computer program so but here is what the meaning of per se is so per se the code of the patent uh, of your computer program of your app or your anything that you build it's not patentable uh, so you need to think about what you are creating with the code and how it solves an actual problem uh okay so patentability criteria i have already mentioned to you in some way but
participants are requested to stay back uh, sir will join in uh, few, few minutes in one or two minutes sir bhai ji no sir sir just sir two minutes sir sir will be joining i have already sent a message huh? Meanwhile, why to why to maintain silence? So let us have some talk with the resource person, Jagdish. I hope all faculty members and uh, students are uh, safe and uh, their family members. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. So, how are you, students? In sir. Fine, sir. Thank you. Good. Great to hear why your voice is after a long time. Thank God, when I will be able to see you. So, how how you are liking these activities? Any feedback you have regarding the past events? So that we can improve upon. No, interaction is very very important. The main difference between uh, our students, our state students, and uh, northern state students, are uh, we have lot of knowledge, but we hesitate to speak. Uh, sorry, sir. Sir, I think you are not audible, sir. Your mic is on to be unmuted. Sir. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah, sorry about the delay. Uh, so there's a thunderstorm here because of which I think they restarted the router. And yes, however much time we have, let's continue. So. Uh, so yeah. So let's see the patentability criteria where where we left. Uh, just a moment. Uh, so novelty is one where your invention must be new that is it should not be known to public by any means by any means it means really you know examiner can search anything they can see search old patents they can search for old research articles and they can also search just online just uh, google maybe if someone has made a youtube video which describes the invention the way you have put in your patent even that can be ground on which your patent can be refused so novelty is you know goes without saying should be the the most important criteria and then there is a factor of inventiveness that means you cannot you, your invention should be sufficiently inventive and that means it should not be obvious to the skilled person whoever is skilled in that particular domain so if you just add one more uh, say a leg to a chair that is not that will have a problem with in inventiveness even if someone has never done it before you will see that your invention is refused because it will be accepted as as obvious so the non obviousness test is is there which will determine whether you will get a patent or not and finally i had already mentioned this your patent should have industrial applicability that means it should be useful in the broader sense to avoid any frivolous inventions and you know people trying to uh, fool the patent system uh so okay so moving on a typical timeline of a patent document is is long so uh when you think about patents usually people think in a, it's a one shot action but no the life cycle of a patent lasts even 5 years and even up to 10 years so you have to have a research mindset usually people who are inventing they're not inventing just one patent so they 
it follows a life cycle and they are continuously improving the invent the invention and if they have a improved invention they file a new patent and so on so the whole thing is a process and not just you know uh, all your eggs are not in one basket so for example when you make the first filing call also the priority filing you have 12 months uh, if you want to go abroad that means if you think that your invention has global potential you can uh, have a product which can be sold globally you might have want to you know get patents in other countries also with your invention uh, where you think your markets are so you have 12 months time to you know file foreign filings and also after first filing within 18 months your patent will be published by the patent office so uh, there is a room also for early publication where you can get it published faster but after 18 months uh, it will get published and that's when you will get other people will get to know that okay there is a patent that has been published and everyone can learn from this knowledge because it's public and but the process doesn't end there because the whole examination process happens so in india we don't have that many examiners and there's a lot of patents being filed so there's always a backlog and they are always doing things to hire more examiners or you know make the process more efficient but still on an average it can even take up to 4 to even 5 years to get an decision uh, from from the patent office that your patent has been accepted or granted and even after grant there are ways in which you can appeal uh, if your patent was refused you can do appeals if your patent was granted even third parties can oppose a patent that okay your patent should not have been granted in the first place because it was not meeting the criteria that we just uh, mentioned uh so yeah uh and here it actually it's this process i have just put it in the indian context so first you make a patent filing and with that you can make an early publication it's optional but if you do that within one month you will have a publication uh actually also people uh, in india the patent is not examined automatically so you have to put a request for examination it is a fee for request for examination usually people who are serious they will make patent filing uh, along with that they will request early publication and they will also request an examination that okay uh, now that we have filed we want it to be examined so then uh, after request for examination there will be an exam uh, they can also be a pre grant opposition after publication so any third party anyone in the anyone in the world actually can make a pre grant opposition and the examiner will take into account and if needed he will also send it to to the in, in inventor uh usually there is a first examination report almost always there will be uh, a first examination report where examiner is going to raise some objections that okay uh, it seems that some of your claims are not you know correct or they are not inventive or you know you have to explain something better so and then once you do uh successfully you answer all the objections and the examiner is convinced that's when you get a grant the grant is published and it is open for one year for third party opposition that means anyone who's interested can file opposition against your patent uh but you can enjoy your rights from patent grant onwards that nobody else can infringe your uh, ip or copy your product so okay this was brief idea about the innovation process in india Uh, i want to quickly show you the contents of the patent application because once you will you know write start writing your patent application you will have to write these sections and even when you talk to a patent agent patent attorney these are the places these are the things you should have it ready so title of the invention normally 15 words short precise relevant field of invention a short paragraph that describes what technology field you are in uh, so that the examiner can easily understand that okay this is on a very over O overview level that this is this technology and they can assign you know do administrative work in the back end uh, background of the invention to describe what exists what are the problems with the current uh, solutions uh, and mention the closest pieces of literature and prior art and so on uh, object of the invention that what are you trying to solve statement of the invention how you show uh, the statement which showcases the novelty and inventiveness uh, of your patent uh summary of the invention a broad overview so this is a bit more detailed uh you write the complete description and the claims uh, a brief description of all the drawings so if you have five drawings you should describe each and every drawing in the description of your patent uh the detailed description complete you know methodology flow of events and so on 
and finally the claims which is a techno legal text which defines the scope of the invention usually inventors are not i would say uh, you know ready to write patent claim because it's techno legal jargon and usually a lot of experience is needed so more likely most likely you will need help from a you know patent agent or a patent attorney to write patent claims and that is why it is always advisable not to file inventions on your own because if you don't write claims very well you can in, uh, you know a very good invention can be destroyed uh, by writing poor claims uh, so if you think you are not ready if your invention is a bit you know you think uh, it's early stage you can file a provisional patent which is a patent that does not get published so there are two kinds of patent you can file actually uh, basically provisional patent Uh, which has gives you a secure a priority date that okay you get a date from the office that you have the inventor and you have filed it and you get 12 months to file the complete application so no, this provisional patent as the name suggests it's provisional and then within 12 months you have to file the complete patent which is more hard work and you have to describe properly uh, but provisional patent is relatively less work less costly and it gives you time 12 months to study the commercial viability to see whether your invention has potential and then accordingly file it or abandon it uh so okay so a little bit about patent search i think uh, i will speak around 10 15 more minutes and then i'll open uh uh then i will open the it for some questions so again patent searching is super important it's one of the first things you have to do in the early stages of the invention so forget about you know novelty inventive step Uh, you know patent agent or filing a patent and so on uh, think about you know whether your idea is valid or not so actually it's very surprising that how much innovation is being repeated so there is even research out there says that even like up to 70% of the r and d it's being uh, it's being replicated that means people are just reinventing the wheel just because they don't know it already exists uh, to avoid reinventing the wheel the most important thing to avoid infringement of others patents so inadvertently you don't want to infringe others patents uh, to keep an eye on competitors uh, sorry to keep an eye on competitors so big companies they are having a patent department lot of analysts and they will you know uh, always uh, look at what are their other their competitors are doing so that they know uh, the trends in their industries Uh, and from a point of view of the inventor you know why patent searching is important it it's you know you it gives you the option to learn from existing inventions you get new ideas when you do patent search you see that okay somebody has solved the problem in such a innovative way that gives you an idea some maybe some part of your invention can be copied from an early, uh, earlier patent because if you copy some different ideas from different patents you know the final output is very unique you know that is considered to be Uh, novel and inventive so make sure that you get ideas uh, from previous patents to enrich your own inventions and prior art will help you i think we have already discussed it it will help you to crystallize the patentability criteria novelty and inventive stuff uh, and finally <laughs> there is no way to define that your invention is unique if you do not do a proper prior art search so uh, i do have one or two exercises uh, i would like you all to open a new browser tab uh, and open this espacenet.com so worldwide.espacenet.com and i want you to search this patent number uh, so us 2006 this was a patent from 2006 published us 2006 and then 026521 so please you know take 30 seconds to search this on this website espacenet.com you can also search on google patents uh, patents.google.com but uh, i leave that to you so i will also do it with you so that uh, you know uh, i can show you that what a good patent looks like mm, great great uh, and you can write on the chat what you learned you can write the title you can write the uh, you can write the invention uh, whatever whatever you see there you know i'm i'm happy to see that okay somebody is you know doing it So I have eSpaceNet open here. So I will. So 
let me see the chat if someone has written uh yes i see uh so uh, okay no one has written so far so can you write the title of the invention if anyone has done the searching on their own uh, i would like them to you know look at this patent so it's a patent you can see apple computer uh it is gestures for touch sensitive input devices actually it's one of the most blockbuster patent of the 21st century it's related to the earliest touch screen patent of the iphone in the, from the first iphone ah the number uh, number is here you can see the number here i would like all of you to open this website worldwide.espacenet.com search for this patent number us 2006 026521 so uh what i want to show you in this invention is that okay you can quickly see the title you can quickly see at the bottom this abstract of the invention so you get an idea what it is uh but you can also see here description claims there might be in depending on your screen resolution there might be a drop down here so you can see description so they have written it very very accurately and exhaustively so this is you know of course apple has some of the best patent writers and and people who draw uh, with in house patent department so their patents are of very high quality uh, but still i mean i want you to see this application as a good patent looks like so you can see the field of invention as i mentioned earlier they have also written that touch sensitive devices in general they have described the prior art description of the related art uh they have written the summary of the invention and so on so you know you have described each and every drawing there has like 30 35 drawings in in this particular patent and everything is very very accurate so you can see all the drawings here how well they have drawn the flow charts how the invention works uh you know how the input is taken from the touch screen how it the input is processed uh how the user is going to use the the that sensitive device uh what are the assumptions made you know when a large area of the screen is touched and so on you know you can see even like in the end you will see examples of you know people actually using and zooming a map so this was a very famous thing you know nowadays we take it for granted but this patent actually solved all the things that how you can zoom in to a map and so on uh so yeah so this i wanted to show you just uh, as a reference okay uh gestures for texture okay yes great uh, bharat kumar perfect uh yes mon monica yes perfect the title of the invention i'm sure you know uh so i'll give you like couple of other things uh to you know do uh, one of them is like a quick and dirty search so here is something i will teach you you know which requires no need of operators requires no skill okay anyone can do it from somebody in experienced in patents to even a technology manager or you know some kind of a, a patent uh, you know guide in your institute so so i'll show you something which everyone can do so basically you open espacenet.com and you simply type your technology phrase in the search box that's it and i will show you how you can do that suppose uh, of course there are some examples here you can type this or you can write your own technology phrase and i will show you exactly how it goes suppose i am a researcher in the field of wind turbines i am researching wind turbines for renewable energy and you know putting wind turbines in the coast of odisha and so on uh wind turbines so i just type wind turbines you see i just type these two words and you will see i got 109000 results and that that's a lot right nobody no human being can actually go through this this many patents but the sorting if you see here it is sorted by relevance that means uh based on the words based on your queries that you have here uh you will only have the top most relevant patent so usually when you type some precise uh words you will see that the top 20 patents are you know really matching with what you do and i'll show you how you can narrow down so so if you open on any of these applications you can quickly read the title abstract you can see whether it's relevant and if it's not relevant you can go to another patent or or save it you know in an excel sheet but now 
this hundred and nine thousand is a lot, right? So, uh, and also wind turbines is actually a very broad technology. So, you know, everything to do with wind turbines. So, what exactly? So, now suppose you want to narrow down a bit. You are working with wind turbine generators. So now you just write wind turbine gen generator. And now here you see, from hundred thousand, the number of hits came down to thirty five thousand. So that's the beauty of it, that as you keep adding keywords. Uh, objects and functions related to your technology. Uh, this is where you know idea is being matured into an invention, where you put more and more precision. Your key, your results are going to continuously narrow down. So now you see, even at the top, because of the rel re relevance score, you see wind turbine generators. Now the earlier we were seeing only like general wind turbine patents, where either of the two words are there. Fuel and cell retrieves documents where both words have to exist because you use the and. And fuel cell in quotation marks where it retrieves documents where both words come together. So, so like this. So I would like you to put the number of hits, number of results you get for all these three search queries in the chat. And after that, uh, I can also do it and we will open the floor for questions. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the queries just in case someone wants to refer it. So just open a new browser tab, go to espacetent.com, open the search console, and just type these three queries one after the other. <laughs> and note the number of hits in the chat. Yes. Seven two three two three hundred. That's seven million, right? <laughs> That's because it's very wide. The word fuel comes in many patents. The word cell comes in many patents. So it's that search basically makes no sense. But fuel and cell, it's already getting more precise because you make sure that okay, both words are there. So how many for fuel and cell? Yeah, 450,000. So see how dramatically the number of hits went down. So less than 10 times. So. So yeah, 451,388 results. Excellent, everybody. Uh, great. So you've basically performed your first patent searches. And for the third one, I believe it will be even less than this because you are restricting here. The criteria is that it can be anywhere in the patent document, these two words. But once you put a, a double quote, then you mean that both these words have to be together. So you are putting an extra bit of condition and you will see that the number of hits are the lowest when you use fuel cell in quotation marks. So, folks, uh, again, you can expand it. Suppose, again, fuel cell also, you know, is something that needs to have a cooling system, okay, for a proper cooling system. You can, you know, put, say, again, an AND operator and say cooling. Okay, now this will go down. So, again, from 260,000 became 90,000. So, you can keep putting AND operators to reduce the number of queries. And you can also use a wildcard where the cool coolant, cooling, cooled, you know, just cool, all of them are taken into account. And again, you can see we were able to capture 20,000 more patents because uh, we used cooling, coolant, cooled, and all these, you know, different variations. So uh, uh, we are doing all these search related webinars. We have a lot of videos on patent search uh, for, uh, on our YouTube channel. So feel free to, you know, do it. Uh, and uh, uh, for today, uh, it might be so that we might not be able to cover uh, patent search in extensive detail, but by all means, you know, uh, we can have a future webinar. And uh, meanwhile, uh, go to uh, this is my email address if you want to get in touch for more information. And uh, uh, add me on LinkedIn, put a message if you are trying to connect for any reason. Uh, call me 
or WhatsApp me on this number and use it our website turnip.co.in. Uh, so, so I have even uh, I even have a patent course running there. So if you want, you can uh, enroll for it. Uh, but yeah, thank you everybody for writing these answers. Uh, so yeah, uh, fuel cell when quotation marks is correct to seventy six thousand. Uh, it's 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 correct. So I want you to just think of you know this eSpaceNet as a global source of patent information. They have hundred plus hundred million patents or something in the repository. So it's really really uh, comprehensive pat uh, pat uh, pat patent search. And uh, uh, really, all the best. I mean, do these searches to learn, to improve your inventions, to you know start your journey basically of of patenting. And I can tell you that you don't need to be a genius to do patents. All you need is you know awareness, and you need uh, some kind of creative willpower to to you know uh, patent your inventions. So anyone basically can be a patent uh, holder. So thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Uh, if you have any questions, again, uh, these are the details for how. Uh, dear participants, please post your questions on chat box. Our resource person will be answer those ones. I request the participants to post their questions and doubts in the chat box. Uh, I think Sar left. Uh, uh, please stay for a few seconds. If possible, Sar will join. Yeah. Sir, we have kept the feedback and the attendance, li uh, attendance yeah, uh, links, sir. Sir, one, please uh, announce that feedback link already posted. Please uh, inform to the participants. OK, sir. I request the participant to give the feedback and the e-certificate link has been posted in the chat box. Sarvan, I think Sar could not able to join uh, due to some climate conditions. Just we can uh, close the session. Now. Continue okay, your questions. Sir. We can continue your questions. Users and participants. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Continue. Uh, yes, sir. Dear sirs and participants, for the memory of an event purpose, please switch on the video for a few seconds. We can take a snapshot.
Thank you, one and all. Sir, one, you can so finally, the stands. Yes, sir. So finally, we can conclude this webinar by thanking our honorable vice president, sir, Mr. Satish Mehta, sir. Thank you, sir. We can, I would like to thank our honorable principal, sir, Dr. Yes Sambu Prasad, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank our vice principal, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank our honorable resource person, Dr. Rahul Kapoor, sir. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank our respectable, which bodies of respectable departments. Thank you, sir. I would like to thank our management staff, faculty members, technical staff, students, and all the participants for making this webinar a grand successful one. Thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.